The problem is when you decide to build a business that's completely online, you make yourself completely open to all of the risks that coming that come with putting yourself online. Like, you know, people don't even know they have a problem until it's too late and that problem has destroyed them. Leave a comment below if you're joining us live or on replay. I've been getting a lot of questions on cybersecurity and how do we protect ourselves with all these scams and hacks coming out, right? We are online sellers and our business is online. And my guest today is one of the experts in, in that field. He's a cybersecurity expert. So without further ado, Brian, I'll give you the, uh, the floor and we can kind of jump on in. For the last 20 years, I have been, um, I, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm a managed service provider. Um, I run a company that basically secures uh, small to medium enterprises in my area, my local area, in and around uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. What I, what I decided to do is I wanted to sort of grow my business. I decided I needed to learn something about marketing, which is something I knew nothing about. And so I got into this digital marketing space and started learning about funnels and started learning about this and that. What I saw in the comments in the One Funnel Away group and in the ClickFunnels official channel, I was looking at all these people who were looking to like start online businesses and looking at the questions they posed about tech let me know that like they didn't have like the first clue and the problem is when you decide to drive and and build a business that's completely online you are you make yourself completely open to all of the risks that coming that come with putting yourself online like you know if your entire business is is based in the cloud uh, while well, the cloud as you know is accessible to, is accessible to everyone, right? And uh, and so, uh, and not only that, but like there are there are thousands of sites that you probably have passwords for, and not all of them are equally secured. Like you know, like you're pretty sure that Facebook has pretty good security, and, and Microsoft has pretty good security, and Amazon has pretty good security, but like Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds .com, not so great, right? So one of the things I always like hopefully to hopefully they're not on right now. Well, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> um, and, well and, and if Bob's comfy doggy beds, that is my go-to. That that now when I talk about this is my is my go-to my go-to terrible domain that probably gets hacked. You know, routinely. <laughs> um, so if you're from Bob's comfy doggy beds and you have a robust security infrastructure, I apologize. <laughs> um, no, but the, so what I like to talk about is something called credential stuffing. And uh, and when I when I really first started talking about, I mean, it's it's been around for a while, but I the, I always like to talk about it first around Thanksgiving because I like to say credential stuffing is not that tasty stuff you get with your turkey. It's an awful thing that hackers use to really ruin your life. Right. The problem for most people is comes down to basically password management. Right. Because if you have uh, if you have like a hundred different sites, then uh, then what do you do well what most people do what most people do is they have like one password and so they go well they try to think of like okay well all right i've got one password but you know what i'm gonna think of like one really good password right and then that's that should save me right because then i'll i can never be hacked because i i picked i picked this one password that was 12 characters long or whatever it is right well mm -hmm. the problem with that is that again like amazon and facebook are secure but bob's comfy doggy beds isn't and so the problem is when you use, if you if you have your one email address and you use that and you use your one password to sign up for every site, well, the problem is when Do Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds gets hacked, guess what they do? They get your username and your password for that and they try it on every single other site they can think of wow. to see what wow. sticks. So That's if you guys remember, um, if you guys remember back when Disney Plus first launched, there was a report about a week in about Disney Plus has been hacked, thousands of accounts for sale on the dark web. Well, you know what? No, Disney Plus is secure. Disney Plus didn't get hacked at all. What happened is that these were all these people who used the same password for their Disney Plus account that they used for Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds.com. So they used pre accounts that have been previously breached and they use that same password. And so all the Pearson did was they bought a list of credentials off the dark web and just threw it at Disney Plus to see what stuck. Oh and they got goodness. into tens of thousands of people's Disney Plus accounts. I had no idea. I didn't know that's how it worked. That is nuts. Right? So the I mean the the ultimate the ultimate answer is honestly guys like you you want to use a different password for every single site you log into. That's not easy to do 
on your that's not well that's that's virtually impossible to do on your own so you need you need assistance and and what i highly recommend doing is using a using a password manager um, it takes some it takes a little bit of time to learn it takes a little bit of time to set up but once you got it once you have it up and running you'll you'll wonder what you ever ever did without it i'll is tell that, you that right oh go ahead sorry right is that like a last pass or anything it's something like that yeah now um so as 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 you know, because you're in my group, I actually have a I actually have a program, and part of that program is 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 basically training you, accelerating your accelerating your ability to get into and start using a password manager. And the one that I use for that is actually uh, One Password. Oh, um, now I use One Password because I like the I like I really like the Watchtower feature of it. So from a from a from a ability to store passwords and autofill passwords, LastPass and One Password are absolutely equivalent. But from the standpoint of being able to uh, categorize the passwords that you reuse, so you can very quickly go through and change the passwords that matter, or the other thing that One Password has, which is awesome, is um, is an integration with Have I Been Pwned, which is Troy Hunt's. Um, if you've never seen it before, it's Troy Hunt's database. It's uh, Have I Been P like it's, it's Have I Been Owned but Pwned like so P W N E D dot dot com or dot org. If you just look up Have I Been Pwned, you'll you'll find it. I don't know why I don't know it off the top of my head, but basically he, what he does is he goes out on the dark web and he buys these caches of credentials and then he uploads them publicly. And so you can type your email address into Have I Been Pwned and it'll tell you every breach that your email address has been involved in and whether or not they have your password for that site. Well, one password, one password integrates with that. And so as soon as you import or add all of your passwords into one password, it'll tell you immediately. It'll be like, oh, by the way, uh, this site, this site was breached. So you're going to want to change that password now, or this site is vulnerable hmm. because it it has appeared in a list of breached passwords before. That's uh, really not, neat. Uh, not pwned. It's actually no O in pwned. It's just P W N E D, and oh, it's all one word. And it's all one word. Okay. So that's what I that's what I really promote. I I actually started uh, using LastPass, and I actually moved to One Password. Um, Primarily because of primarily because of that that watchtower feature, which really lets you get ahead of a breach, because uh, when it gets breached, Troy Troy is pretty good at picking up the the credentials off the dark web, and so you'll you'll have your you'll have your password manager telling you that your password has been breached before you hear the news that it's been breached. Oh, well, that's crazy! I'm definitely yeah. going to switch, and um, and I'm guilty. I'm also guilty of you. <laughs> I use LastPass, but I use almost the same password for every every site, which is I know it's, it's not funny to you, but it's um, I I need to change that, and I'm I'm gonna do that today for yeah. sure. Um, and uh, and it's and it, it's really not that difficult. But the other th the other thing is that ultimately, um, you know, passwords you could you can have the best password in the world, but. Um, eventually someone's going to be able to crack a password. So mm. the other answer is that any single place that allows it, you want to enable two-factor authentication on everything that you can. Okay. okay. So that's another thing about that I like about one password is that, uh, is that it will tell you, it will tell you all of the sites that have two-factor authentication available and give you instructions to their page that tells you how to enable it for that site. Because ultimately, um, ultimately, like I don't care. Even if even if your password for everything is Winter 2018, if you if you have if you have two factor authentication turned on, it doesn't matter if they have your password because they can't get into your stuff unless they're also holding your phone. Now, there are certain caveats to that that like I don't recommend. Um, I don't recommend that you use text uh, text based two factor authentication, where like when you log in, they send you a text to your cell phone to enter a code, uh, because that's vulnerable to something known as SIM hacking, where what mm. what. Uh, what someone does is they go, they get enough information about you from social engineering, which is super easy to do because because most of you probably have your home address at the bottom of every single one of your marketing emails and you probably registered your domains with your home addresses and you probably have your birthday available on Facebook if I friend you. So now I have by by just getting on your list and friending you on Facebook, I have your I have your your home address. Uh, I have your home address and your birthday, and guess what? Now I can basically be you to about like seventy-five percent of companies, right? You know that's so it's so interesting because as online marketers, right? We want to we use social media, Facebook, Instagram, and we open ourselves up, right? That's the one thing people look. Don't put any privacy settings on there. Open your profile up so everybody can see you. Throw all your information in there. So it's 
right. that's so interesting, here's, but I guess make sure they don't have your birthday, if you can avoid it, your... your yeah, well, like, okay, so, so here's the thing. You want to open yourself up, right? So you're going to put yourself out there, but, he, but like, there are certain things that you can, there are certain things you could do. Like, uh, for me, like, I don't want any of the random creepers on the internet to have pictures of my five-year-old kid, right? So yeah, I'm with I have friends lists. So I have a list of people called real life friends that I make. And I put all the people that I actually know into a list called real life friends. And then what I do is when I post stuff that's personal to me, I post it to my real life friends. And then actually, and when I post business related stuff, I post it to everyone except my real life friends. Yeah, that's right? a great idea. I actually do that too. It's, it's really helpful um, for many reasons, but that that's a great point, Brian. And, and the other thing is like, even if you're opening yourself up, well, guess what? Unless you, unless, unless it's absolutely core to you that you have a thousand strangers wishing you happy birthday, there is no point of opening yourself up where it really, where you really need all the random people you meet on the internet to know your birthday. Just don't do it. Go into the privacy settings, set it to, set it to only you to start. And then if you get around to having a set of real life friends and you really need that validation of 40 people saying happy birthday to you on your birthday, then great. Then open it up and change the privacy of that list to your real life friends. But but that's but that's about it. What you can do with Facebook is you can just hide the year um, and just have your actual birthday and month. But the trick I find with that is that if somebody really were trying to hack you, well, guess what? All they have to do is go back five or 10 years and probably someone on your profile is posted on your timeline saying happy 45th birthday or, you know, whatever, if yeah. you haven't controlled the privacy on that. So, um, so even if you hide your birthday, it's not too difficult unless you've really, really controlled uh, your, your, your timeline for people to, to figure out the rest of that information. Interesting. Okay. So, wow, this is great stuff, Brian. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, when and I'm in the business of cybersecurity and I'm, and I'm trying to sell like, you know, uh, you know, I was trying to sell a course on, on cybersecurity and, and things like that. And the problem with it is that it right now, it's a little bit like selling insurance, right? And the problem with insurance is that nobody wants to buy insurance until it's too late and they really wish they had insurance, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's the trick because I'm telling people right now that, uh, you know, last, uh, last year in 2019, there were 851 billion reported incidences of randomware, ransomware in the world, right? That's like oh almost, one, almost 1 billion reported cases. Um, just three weeks ago, just three weeks ago, I got I got I got rehired by a company, a two person, just two people, right? A two person company that got hacked and lost everything, and lost everything oh to ransomware. And they hadn't been doing they hadn't been doing backups. They didn't have any. They didn't have protection in place. They didn't you know they didn't know what they were doing, and so and and they they lost they lost everything. And this is and, and so you think ransomware only attacks cities like Baltimore or hospitals or governments, and it's absolutely not true. Ransomware mm. targets everyone, and right now uh, there's an attack as of tw as of um, as of twenty nine end of twenty nineteen. There was a new ransomware attack every twenty three seconds. Uh, as of the end of twenty twenty, they expect it'll be down to about every nineteen seconds that somebody else will be destroyed by ransomware um it's it's really it's almost not a question of if anymore it's really a question of when and the problem is when you get hacked if you don't have your house in order it is devastating because um like they get into your they get into your gmail well, what's the first thing they do is they they change your gmail password and then they change the recovery email on your gmail account so now you have to go through and you have to figure out how to prove to google that you are you because they go well that's not the email address we have on file that's not the password so what do you like who you know who are you wow um, or they go through and they take over your facebook account and they delete all your friends or they start posting racist and homophobic slurs in your groups uh as you and then you get banned by facebook and now everything that you've built is gone right because even if you don't think you have an, any skin in the game or any money in online or anything to lose well guess what all the work that you've been doing to start to build your business that can be gone literally in an instant and and if if nothing else are the are the are the are the 40 40, 50, 100 hours of time that you've that you've spent building your business, is that not worth anything to you to protect? 
Jeez, right? yeah. And, Lin and Linnea says, yeah, they also hack school systems. Which oh, is, absolutely. Which is very scary, right? I mean, those are our kids. And um, I mean, besides, I look at it like this too, Brian, right? So if they can get to me on social media or wherever, right, I'm, they can get to my family, right? I'd imagine there's ways that, and besides, besides our businesses being in jeopardy, our fam maybe our families, right? Their personal information and things like that. Um, yeah. That are in jeopardy as well, which is which is also very important to all of us. Yeah, that, I mean that's as I said, that's one of the things I do with friends list because I don't like if you if you go look up my profile, I have some public I have some public posts uh, which are all basically sort of cybersecurity related, and then if you become my friend, you will see you will see all of my all of my marketing and and stuff related posts. But I I challenge you to look through my timeline and find a picture of my son. Challenge you know? accepted. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants, to, not that, yeah. not that a lot of people go creeping you, but like it's like no. the, the people. But then again, like the good people aren't going to go back and creep you. The problem who right. you're worried about is the bad people, and that's their entire thing. Is they're going back and tr and trolling and creeping your um, and creeping your profile to try to find information they can use against you. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, we we all we all hear about this stuff, right? You know. We, we, I guess we saw it not too long ago when all like Target, all these big companies got hit with it. Yep. And we think, oh, it's never going to happen to us, right? We're not Target. They, no, they don't care about us. But it's it's going to hit us harder as small, not only small businesses, but individuals and families and things like that. And that's scary stuff. Um, and this and it doesn't seem like it's that hard. You just take the necessary steps, right? Yep. Um, and just do it. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, there 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 are a number of things you can do. Like if. Um... Uh, one of the things is like just get backup again that's one of the things I talk about in my course is how to set up a robust backup system um, and 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 it's and the ba backups are backups are on the order of like six dollars a month like you know oh, six dollars wow. a month is a pittance and it'll back up your entire computer to the cloud with with a with a key with an encryption key that you set so if you if you're using a password manager you can save a 50 character encryption key well guess what now not even the nsa can break into your backups right because that's what a lot of people who are cloud resistant are like well if i put it in the cloud then the nsa can read my data because they think the government's trying to look at everyone which is only partially true <laughs> but but yeah. yeah but if you if you if you do a, if you get a proper backup system you can back it up set your own encryption key and then not even the company that's hosting your backups can access your data it's literally so you're the so only person on, those are online or through the cloud yeah you can do okay. yeah. i mean i well, have one of those external hard drives but that's not right so so the company I was talking about that got hacked and lost everything, it turns out that they had actually been backing up because three years ago when I set up their server for them and then they ghosted me, um, they 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 used an external they used an external drive. And so I set them up to back up to that. And so I asked them if they had backups and they're like, well, yeah, we had we had and um, uh, but then like the, the drive started making this clicking noise. Anyways, I'm like, okay, well, let's see where your backups are. And they went to some other room and came out with this external drive with the power cord wrapped around it. And I said, well, like, when was the last time this was plugged into the computer? Um, and, and I go back into the Windows Server backup and I look at it and it was January 5th. And at this point it was March 17th. So I'm like, so at best, at best, even if this drive is working, you've lost two months of data. And then I plugged it mm -hmm. in and it's not recognized as a drive. And so I cracked it open and I saw the drive heads and crashed against the platters and scratched the crap out of it. And so now that that USB drive they've been using to back up is completely useless. They can't use it. Wow. Might as well throw it out the window. It's junk. So wow. So the, the problem with USB backup is that one, you have to remember to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, which is which 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 is a problem for people because unless 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 cybersecurity thinking is part of your routine like it is for me um it's not it's not easy to be like oh god did i remember to back up and then like oh now it's now it's been a week now it's been a month or whatever if you do a cloud-based backup it's something that will just run every day or it'll continuously back up your stuff and then you don't have to think about it because my thing with cybersecurity is that um what I want to teach entrepreneurs is that I can teach you to be a thousand times more secure than you are right now, and I can actually make your life so much easier. Yeah, no, I bet. I bet it's crazy um, to think because it's like it, it reminds me of, and I'm sure this has happened to everybody. You know, you're in high school or college, right? And you write your your thesis or your long paper, and you're 30 pages in, and and it's gone, right? It's it's all this. 
not laughable, but it's gone. Um, I remember, it happened to my wife, and she was in law school when it happened, and it would. Yeah, she cried the rest of the day. I mean, it's miserable, right? That is a lot of hours, a lot of time, and you have to redo it. Um, this is this is a whole new level to that. Yeah. You know, this is everything. Like you talk, I mean, you, you talk about the, there's guys like uh, Matt Matt Honan from TechCrunch, uh, like he was uh, he was hacked because they wanted his uh, they wanted his Twitter handle, but they basically used his they got his Amazon to break into this to break into that, and they basically did his whole life. They drained his bank accounts, they ran up his credit cards, they did they did everything. Um, I have a I have a video that I I don't know if I actually posted in the group yet. If I have it, I will. But of a guy who basically went to DefCon and expecting to be hacked and he asked a hacker to try so he was expecting it he was mm. expecting a, a top level hacker to be trying to hack him and he still got socially engineered and caught by it and that guy and, that, and now they gave it all back but they they basically they they drained him like and so even if you can even if you can recover it right like so credit card has fraud prevention right but guess what if if something happens and they go and they go and they break into your they break into your credit card and they get and they change a lot of your personal information or they or they impersonate you then guess what you have to then get once again prove prove that you're you and can you what what if you couldn't use your credit card for a month right like um you know even if even if those charges get reversed uh you know it can take months or if they if they drain your bank account the bank has to do an investigation they're not going to give you back your money tomorrow yeah that's that's crazy i mean we all think about the notion of what is your time worth? You know, the value of your time, especially as small businesses, it's, it's a lot. And um, if we have to run around doing all that, that's that's money out of our pocket. It's money out, you know, out of our family's pockets, um, just as as one of the negatives. So that's yeah. that's crazy stuff. So I we mean, have, yeah. So you have password management, right? That's what you, that's the number one thing you went through. Um, Two factor authentication. Yep. Uh, Facebook friends list which would be great, you know, put yeah. put all of your your personal friends in one list um, so they can see certain posts and you can post others to the rest of, the, you know, your business world. And then backup system. Yeah. Um, so those four items so far, which are awesome, which I'm gonna make sure to do after this live for myself, um, that's incredible. And then the next thing, and so the, the fifth thing would just be, Listen, buy a decent paid antivirus, okay? okay? And for the love of God, do not use McAfee. Do not <laughs> use Trend Micro and do not use Norton. Ooh, let me get rid of that off my computer. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Webroot, Bitdefender. Uh, I'm actually, that's actually funny. It's uh, one of the offers I'm trying to come up with now is to see if there's any way that I can make my stack that I deploy like the enterprise level stack that I deploy for my small to medium business clients, if I could extend that to like residential customers, oh. um, because I have, um, like I have access to, I have access to antivirus products that you do not have as a consumer. Um, and so I, I'm working, I'm working on seeing if I can make that feasible. Cause the problem is, is that like supporting, supporting one 50 person company is a lot easier than supporting 51 person companies. <laughs> I bet. So, I bet. Um, um, wow. No, actually, I think I, I think I have Webroot. I think that's yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I have because I think Best Buy does that one. So I think so. Uh, Webroot, uh, Webroot, I like. And and if you look in my if you look at my group, you can see the resources. I have affiliate links for all the products I promote. But I assure you that it it it's it's uh it was it was definitely chicken before the egg. Like these were products I use. And so when I went to go and do this, I went to find out if they had affiliate programs. Not I went to find out who had an affiliate program and then chose to promote them. Right? Because I want sure. to assure people that like I am promoting and I drink my own Kool Aid. All every. Like all the stuff that I teach you how to use in my course is stuff that I actually use. That's how I protect myself. Right. right. That's good. That's good so, to know. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people are just affiliate hungry and um, go out and just, you know, pull all these affiliate links and say, here, buy this, buy this. So that's, yeah. that's nice to know. That's so sure. I've never, that's never, and maybe that makes me a terrible affiliate 
uh, I'm a terrible affiliate marketer because I'm not willing to, to I'm not willing to promote stuff I haven't I don't believe in or haven't used. But uh, yeah, so you're I mean you're in my you're in my group. I'd love to I'd love to keep growing that because I want to keep I want to keep serving that way. If nothing if nothing else in the group, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try to drop in stuff like what I'm talking about today that are actual actionable tips for people. But uh, but mostly I just want to help make people aware of what's going on out there and and things you can do to protect yourself. So that's what I'm. So that's what I'm doing in my in my group. And then, um, as you as you probably know, I'm I'm actually in my I've got my first class full of hack proofers yeah. going on uh, going on this April. And uh, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be running another one in May. So I'll see if uh, I'll see if anybody else I'll see if anybody else values their privacy and security enough to uh, to join come May. And where can where can my group find that? So, uh, if you well, if you go to my group, which is uh, yeah. Business Protection Hacks, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, Facebook.com/groups/slash Business Protection Hacks, that'll get you to my group. Or if you just go to uh, if you just go to HackProofMe.com, uh, the 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 landing page for HackProofMe.com is literally just a video and okay. a link to tell you to join my group. All right, um, put it in the comments, HackProofMe.com. Um, Enigma Spy Hunter. I don't. Uh, I don't know that one. So that's a. That's not a. I don't know if that's a proactive tool or if that's a reactive tool. Uh, Spy Hunter. I've Spy Hunter. I remember from a while ago. I personally, if I'm using a reactive tool, I use something called. I usually malware bytes. M A L W A R E B Y T E S. That's the scanner. If I if somebody says I think I have something, I say go get this. It's free, and you can run a scan. And it'll find the bad stuff on your computer and help you get rid of it. But it's is it an antivirus? Okay, I don't uh, I don't know. I, I don't I, I don't I don't know it. But there's like there's a there's a million there's a million out there, right? And so and and the. And part of the trick is that the the antivirus comparatives and those those places where you see them, well, you have to understand that's a that's a pay pay to play industry, right? So, uh, you know, anytime you go into anytime you go into like the AV rankings and you see Norton in like the top like the the, the high like the leaders quadrant, uh, you know that they've put a ton of money into it because there's just no there's just no way, like Norton is signature based so it's it's like it's it's old it's clunky i i my old, my old joke used to be is like buy a new computer and if the first thing you do is a sold norton it's amazing it's like you have a three-year-old computer <laughs> like, because oh the God. slowdown is just so crazy right um so so the what are the so you i mean i know you talked about it a little bit but what are the major things then for these the antivirus because well, you get normally people don't look for these things. You, when you buy a computer, like I said, I got I think I got Weber from Best Buy when I got it, and it's yep. you know you almost put trust in it that it's fine, this will work, or yep. so, you just assume that it's working. So Weber, when I started uh, when I started using that for my clients, I've 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 actually moved to something else now, but I, I still I have no problem with Weber. It's anyway. Uh, but one of the reasons I use Weber is because I went to a I went to a tech conference with. Uh, uh with people who do what i do for a living and and out there speaking was a guy who's one of the top forensic investigator forensic cyber investigators in canada so he goes all over the world to investigate people who are hacked and figure out what happened and how they can protect themselves and so after he after he spoke i sort of cornered him and i said so like i know that there are lots of real like enterprise grade enterprise grade antiviruses but those are sort of those are sort of out of the reach of like definitely out of the reach of the consumer and out of the reach of a lot of small businesses so like what would you what would you recommend uh, as an antivirus for a small business and he at that point said webroot and one of the okay. main reasons for that is that webroot is behavior based and it has rollback capability which means that what it what webroot does versus a signature based what a signature based antivirus does is it basically scans files to see if any of them match a signature that's been downloaded by your computer and so they have a library of known threats and they match files against those known threats the problem is zero day threats aren't in their database yet so they attack your computer before you've got the new signature and so what what a web root does in behavior-based antivirus is it actually monitors everything that happens on your computer and 
and then it calculates what that program is doing. And if that program is doing something weird or doing something that it thinks is malicious, then what it does is it'll submit that program's activity to the Webroot cloud, at which point people get involved and actually look at what that program did. And, it, and then if they mark it as bad, then Webroot will roll back every action that program took. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right? So okay. that's what you're really looking for in a next gen uh, antivirus is you're looking for something that's behavior based. It's actually watching not just not just what the content of the files are, but what the files are actually doing on your computer, because that's what because ransomware, there's new strains of ransomware all the time. And that's the problem is that a signature based antivirus isn't necessarily going to catch a brand new strain of ransomware or six hour or even if it if, if, if it comes out in the wild and your antivirus gets it out 12 hours later. Well, guess how long it takes to encrypt your entire computer if you get ransomware? about two hours so oh my gosh <laughs> like um yeah interesting wow this is this is good stuff i had no idea so, um good and scary at the same time i guess that's yeah. the point right wow and, then, and so the other um I guess the other thing I want to talk about to you guys as e-com sellers is how you set up your domains when you first buy your domain. Like, so you buy, again, Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds .com and you want to send out mail as Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds. Um, well, if you just if you just do it and then verify it in your autoresponder and start sending out mail, well, the problem is is that you haven't put any of the measures that a that a business generally puts on a domain, which prevent people from spoofing them. Because right now, if you just come out of the gate and you just add your domain to your autoresponder, um, anybody in the world can pretend to be Bob's Comfy Doggy Beds .com and has an equal chance of being delivered to the inbox as you do, because you haven't made, you haven't done anything to tell the world how to identify mail that's actually coming from you as being from you, right? So. Uh, that's another thing that that's another thing that I've been doing is helping. I've I've uh, I've been helping tons of entrepreneurs basically uh, get on a one hour Zoom call with me and, we'll, and go through it, go through one of their domains and just basically go bang, bang, bang. This is what you need to set up. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do to make sure that your domain is secure and that only you can send mail as you. Um, now what i what the way i sell it to the way i sell it primarily to marketers is that the upshot of that is that when you set that up for your own brand protection the the added bonus of that is it makes it far more likely that your mail that you send out will actually go to people's inboxes instead of spam because you are basically telling google or you're telling microsoft or you're telling whoever that listen this mail that i just sent this really came from me it's not from some random spam or somewhere Wow, and that's and literally that could be a, the the monetary difference in something an email going to an inbox or not going to an inbox could be huge. Yeah, right. Not only not only could it be a first time customer, it could be a lifeline customer. So that's I I had no idea. I mean, I knew that you know for domain setup, you know, you get the secure what is it the you know the secure yeah. SSL or whatever it is. Um, right, that secures your website. Then, yeah, that that's all. I didn't know with the with the email though. That's that's yeah. Wow. And there's other like and like with your domain registrar, like you can set up DNS sec. Uh, mm. And I mean, like, I I don't want to get into. I don't want to like. I don't want to overwhelm your people with technical stuff, but because that's my job, that's not your job. But there are things you can do that will prevent people from making unauthorized changes to your DNS. Um, and sorry, I'm gonna be a little bit technical. So DNS is sure. sort of like the phone book of the of the internet. So your website actually has an address of say, like I'm gonna use Google's public DNS. Your IP actually has an address of 8.8.8.8. But it, your website also could have an address of 102.174.136.49. Well, people can't remember those strings of numbers, right? If I told you you had to go to Microsoft and that was the number you had to remember, you'd be like, ah, forget it. I'm just not going to use the internet. So mm -hmm. you need something that turns those strings of numbers into a friendly name like www.google.com or www.microsoft.com. And the system that does that is DNS. DNS translates friendly names that you can remember into strings of IP addresses that you don't want to remember, right? Well, if someone hacks your if someone hacks your DNS, they own your domain, right? If someone hacks your DNS, they can take your website and they can they can basically copy it but drop a nasty piece of ransomware on it and direct your website wherever they want it to go and now anyone who visits your site is now going to their site 
and it looks like your site, except that as soon as your as soon as your customers go to your site, they get ransomware. <laughs> and you would and you wouldn't even know, you know, if I mean, I guess if if your sales sales were down or something like that, you might suspect something's going on, but you wouldn't even know. I mean, no, there's there's no. really no way to tell unless wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, like you, you, you'd, you'd have to, you'd have to know that your sales took a took a big hit. Um, but there are things that, that again, there there are things you can do that will prevent that from happening. And uh, and those are those are the some of the things I do. So, wow, that's this is great stuff. So password management, two factor authentication, separate your friends list in Facebook, backup system antivirus and then correct domain setup wow yeah and so um and so you can uh you can absolutely you can absolutely go and implement all of those things on your own um and and and, and as i said um you know they take they take a little bit of learning but um if you if you if you want to do it faster and you want to be hack proof in 30 days then that is what my program is all about and uh, and so if if you don't mind me giving the link, then uh, no, no, okay. I think I threw it in there too. Hack proof was it hackproofme.com? Hackproofme.com and then okay. slash slash get hack proof faster. Okay, so slash that is okay. that is that'll get you to my that'll get you to my 30 day program where you will get uh, you will get live coaching with me to, to help answer to, to teach you how to do stuff and answer any questions you'll get access to all of the course material I've recorded to refer back to if you have any if you ever have any further questions you have priority messenger access to me so I will answer your questions very quickly for those 30 days if you have any problems um, and and I guarantee after 30 days, unlike a program where you buy it and, and you know, you, you might get results, uh, you might get results if you can figure out how to sell whatever you have to sell. I promise you, if you can just if you could just follow instructions, you will come out the other side of these 30 days uh, like a thousand times safer than you are right now. Wow, this is this is great. And then the other link, if people want, is if you want your email domain, if you want me to spend an hour with you on Zoom and get your email so domain set up so that it goes to people's inboxes instead of spam and so that nobody can impersonate you, then that's at hackproofme.com slash hackproof email. Okay, that, this is good stuff. Now, speaking of Zoom, Brian, Yep. what's going on with Zoom? Well, okay. What, so, what is this stuff? so okay, oh yeah, I know. So they have a couple of privacy concerns. Primarily, right now, and these are the ones you actually need to. These are the ones you actually need to worry about because the other ones are being blown out of proportion, and you can actually take actions that will prevent them from being issues. But the ones you need to be concerned about if you're contesting sensitive information is that Zoom uses something called transport encryption instead of end-to-end -end encryption, which means that your connection to Zoom server is encrypted. And then Zoom's connection, Zoom server's connection to your people are encrypted, but your stuff isn't encrypted when it's in Zoom servers, right? Mm -hmm. So Zoom can see your stuff. The other problem right now is that they have a lot of servers hosted in China and they distribute some of the keys to their encryption scheme from these servers in China. And so the real concern is that the Chinese government can pressure people or pressure or force Zoom to release these keys and then they can spy on your conversations. Okay. Right. Those are the real concerns with those are the those are the legitimate privacy concerns with Zoom right now. And Zoom has recently or just last week announced that they're taking 90 days freezing feature development uh, to completely focus on security. But I will tell you in Zoom, here is the answer. You hear about people getting Zoom bombed and people putting up porn on the on giant meetings. Well, this isn't happening. This probably isn't happening with you and your three people that you have a meeting with. Uh, this is happening in giant, like you know, classrooms and things where they're public, uh, publishing links to Zoom meetings, uh, like publicly. But yeah. so, a couple things you can do: you can enable the wait. You can uh, you can enable the waiting room in, room in Zoom. As a matter of fact, I think as of I think as of like the last update, maybe in the last day or two, I think the waiting room may be enabled by default. But that means that you basically have to admit people into your meetings. The other thing you can do is, although every Zoom meeting now has a password, if you're sending out invites, um, like if you if you just have someone's Zoom meeting ID and you try to log into it, it will ask you for a password if they've created if they've scheduled a meeting. But if you're really concerned about it, what you can do is you can actually in Zoom set an additional meeting password that you would communicate 
separately to your invitees and then they can't and then even if they even if someone has even if you put say the link out on facebook unless they also have that password then they can't get into your thing you can also in zoom and i think i don't know if you have to have a pro you may have to have a pro license for this but you can also set the settings so that only the host is allowed to share their screen so you do that and now all of a sudden you're not worried about people you know putting porn up on the screen or whatever um yeah, like there are a lot of things you can do to make Zoom safer for yourself, and Zoom has taken a lot has taken a lot of steps to uh, to make Zoom safer for people too. But there are there are there are privacy concerns in in that um, I wouldn't necessarily if you were if you were a healthcare worker or discussing really like private personal information. I don't know that Zoom is the place that I would do that. Um, now. I give that now the uh, you know equivalent services to that are like Microsoft Teams. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Go to meeting by log me in is pretty secure. Uh, Cisco WebEx is pretty secure. Those all do the same thing as Zoom. They're just they don't have as easy entry uh, because they're not free, right? Interesting. Um, yeah. But from a security standpoint, Teams, uh, Teams, and uh, Teams and Go to meeting and WebEx are all, I think, SOC 2 and ISO 9001 or 9002 certified for for yeah. their commitment to uh, their commitment to security and privacy. Uh, so those those are those are safe. You know, if, if all you're doing is if all you're doing is talking about marketing and you don't uh, and you don't really care who hears it, like, you know, you're you're willing to let anybody hear what you have to say, then yeah, there's no there's no problem with Zoom. But just do the thing where like you're the only one who's allowed to share your screen sort of thing, right? Yeah, that's good to know. Um, because you don't want someone Zoom bombing you. And the other problem with the other problem with uh, with Zoom is it, well the other problem with a lot of these guys is in terms of controls because as soon as you get into a as soon as you get into a Zoom meeting, um, I don't think you can force everyone's microphones off because these tools, these tools were never designed to be used that way. They're just now they've exploded. Like Zoom went from 10 million to 200 million users in three weeks. I know. Don't you wish you bought the stock? Yeah, no kidding. A couple eh? months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Zoom is yeah, Zoom is not Zoom is not the devil or anything like that. I I don't I don't have a problem. I still I still use Zoom for I still use Zoom for certain things and. Uh, and and you just have to make sure i mean you have to make sure you set it up like this there's a lot of things where it's like you know if you if you if you don't if you don't know how to use it or set it up properly yeah there are security holes in it and that and that's true of almost anything computer related but uh but certainly you can certainly you can lock it down enough that i would consider it i would consider it safe to use for most business purposes yeah there's just there's steps you have to take just like everything else in our business right guys i mean the, the steps that that the, well, the initial steps here six of them that Brian gave us um, there's a lot more that we need to do um, that's why he has hackproofme.com but yep. at least these six steps will will get you semi secure right I mean at least yep. you'll you'll be ahead of most people um, this domain setup feature that is really can't stop thinking about that I need to go check mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, again, yeah, again, so yeah, hackproofme.com slash hackproof email is the link for that one. Um, okay. But, and I'll, I'll, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if, I, I know we're probably at the, almost at the hour here. So uh, the one tip, the one tip I want to leave people with is um, if you are a solopreneur, you need to get yourself a PO box or a UPS mailbox immediately. Uh, it's, uh, a, a, a UP, uh, uh, a United States Postal Service mailbox is, I think, on the order of eighty to a hundred dollars a year. A UPS mailbox, which you would use if you actually have anything, have to have anything shipped to your business, because uh, FedEx and Purelater, those guys, they won't deliver to a, a PO box. Uh, a UPS box is about about two hundred bucks a year. I know, I know, here in Canada, I paid just over two hundred. So I, I imagine if you divide. 200 by 1.5 that's probably what it costs in the united states because our dollar is so crappy right now <laughs> but um and, and and the reason for that is that right now when you register a new domain unless you are an llc uh, or unless you're a registered corporation like an s corp or an llc that uh that has a registered business address you have to register domains as a private citizen and 
in order to do that, you give them the only address you have. And for most private citizens, that address is their home address. And so another so so another tip I'll give you is that um, and again like these are all the things I now have affiliate links for because I use no, this them. is great this is great so, though um, GoDaddy GoDaddy will sell you who is privacy which I tell everyone you turn on for every domain you have unless unless you are a, like unless you have a brick and mortar business that has a, a address and it behooves you for people to be able to find your address but it's just by looking up your domain but for most people um, who is privacy who is privacy all the time and GoDaddy charges like seven dollars a year for it um, uh, most most providers charge most chargers charge between a seven and ten dollars a year which isn't bad if you have one domain but it really adds up if you have like 20 domains right Namecheap gives you who is privacy for free oh interesting okay and I, Brian, I will second the UPS. Um, I also throw in their FedEx for all my partners. Um, when we set up businesses for them, that's the number one, not the number one, but they always ask, where should I put my mailing address? And I always say, go get a UPS. The PO box, at least here in the United States, is a little difficult because the IRS doesn't like the words or the letters PO. They don't like PO boxes. Um, but yes, definitely don't use your home address for your business, um, besides people knowing it, you're gonna get all this crazy mail. You know what I mean? Yeah. People advertise that businesses all the time and it's just, so definitely do that, I second that. I now know how unsafe I am online, which is, which well, coming from a lawyer and a business lawyer is um, is tough to admit, but it's true. I mean, that's not, this This isn't my area of expertise. That's what and we and, and, and it's not, it. it's not a lot of people's area of expertise. Yeah, and that's the right. problem is that is that um, people don't even know they have a problem until it's too late and that problem has destroyed them. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things you hear about it all the time, but it's it's the yeah. it's the common the common um, phrase, you know, it'll never happen to me, right? That and that's right. what so it's what we all say about many things, but guys, if you're going to do anything, at least do these six items and I'll and I'll share my notes as well. I'll put them in the um, in the comments after this um but i know brian i'm sure you're busy it's we're coming up on the hour and we really truly appreciate um you jumping on and giving us all this value um guys go visit him at hackproofme.com get into his facebook group it's also he provides so much value in that um i love that group i, I follow it every day um and then if you have any other comments throw them in here um if i can't answer them after this i'll shoot him over Brian if he's not too busy and is maybe he can respond uh, either in the group or through email or something like that and we can uh, answer all of your all of your cyber security questions yeah I mean I make I make time I make time for this I make time for I make time for Facebook I make time, but yeah like I I am pretty busy because um, unlike unlike a lot of people who are losing their jobs I'm as I, I'm the IT guy who enables all these businesses to work from home yeah. so let's just say that in the last two weeks I've been like just like a little busy <laughs> I, I I can't imagine I mean that's a good and bad thing right it's yeah um, it's been geez, geez, well that's yeah, the yeah. that's the problem is again like you talk about people who say it'll never happen to me right so yeah do you think do you think that i haven't been telling these companies for five years that hey you might want to have a business continuity plan in case for some reason your office became unavailable and, yep. that, and they're like well there's never gonna be a fire we don't have earthquakes here in toronto there's not gonna we're up on a hill so there's not gonna be a flood and i'm like yeah, yeah but like you should still have a plan and about 20% of my clients actually listened to me and developed it. And so those clients, those clients, when they got, when their business got shut down, they all just went and worked at home because I, because I, they had done what I said and they, and they were set up and everyone else is like, Oh my God, I'm going to work at home. Like, yeah. I think inc it's incredible. There's probably 99.5% of lawyers. I, I work and I told you I work from home and I'm a yeah. lawyer and I've been doing it for 10 years. Um, and every all the lawyers that I talk to that don't do it, they're like, "How am I gonna get my phone calls? How am I gonna do this?" I'm like, "It's pretty simple. It's not. It's really not rocket science." You know, there, there's like <laughs> yeah. so, like, uh, like as a as a as a business owner, if you're gonna have a business phone number, I'm a partner um, with uh, with now, it's called Go to Connect, but it's basically Jive. Uh, it was called Jive Communications before. It's a it's a cloud hosted VoIP system, and for um, 
it's like I think it's I, I think it's about like 33 or something maybe 36 dollars a month if you're just a single user uh, mm -hmm. to have a VoIP line but along with that along with that VoIP line you can have a you can have a hard phone that sits on your desk you have an app that goes on your cell phone that shares that extension so that when your hard phone rings your cell phone rings and um, and you have it builds in virtual faxing it builds in international calling it builds in uh, international calling to like 45 different com countries uh, free calling of course all across all across North America for wherever you are and so uh, so for me the big problem that what these businesses have when they go out of the office is they're like well now people are using their cell phones and they don't want their customers to have their employees cell phone numbers well if you're on a system like this well guess what you just call out your go to connect app and guess what now you're calling from your office number from your cell phone while you're standing in the grocery store yeah exactly we I, use we use Vonage, same same kind of system yeah. and it's yeah it's incredible um, the so. thing I like about uh, because it because it concatenates the reason I the reason I chose it is because uh, buying go to connect uh, buying go to connect from Jive also includes a go to meeting license. So if you if you're paying for Zoom already, then you can drop that and use go to meeting instead. Oh, interesting. And it okay. ties it all in together, and so and so it, it basically it put together a lot of my costs. Or if you're paying, so say you're paying right now for a for a voice voice system, and you're paying for a virtual fax system like Ring Central Fax or something, so that you can get faxes to your email. Well, guess what? This one system takes all that, puts it under one bill, and does all of it for you. And so yeah. that's what that's what I choose to do, and that's what I'm now reselling to my to my clients. Yeah, that's I love the old one. That Bonnet does that too. They did have um, for their video conferencing. They used Chime, Amazon Chime, but they just in the past couple of weeks they actually rolled out their own video conferencing. So okay. it's uh, it works for us. But the, but yeah, there's no reason why every office shouldn't have a system like that in place. I mean, even, so even many, if you have, even if you you go to an office, right, physical space, yeah. it doesn't. So many, so many offices are still tied into like legacy, legacy phone systems from the phone company that like the phones have to stay at the office, and I'm like. Yep. That's that's great, but then that like because as the cyber guy, when you have that as your phone system, if I haven't convinced you to move, then I can get I can I can set up everything so your employees can work from home. The only thing I can't do for you is I can't get your office phones to ring, yeah, easily off site. Right. Interesting. Uh, well, Brian, appreciate it, buddy. Um, you got it, man. To, um, everybody, stay physically, mentally, emotionally safe out there stay cyber safe um, and um, reach out with any questions. Brian is a member of our group, so uh, he'll be able to answer any questions um, when he's not busy protecting his clients right now, um, which is a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> so Along with homeschooling uh, my five-year-old. Oh yeah, yeah, that's um, that's called TV and iPad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we, we a lot of wildcats. <laughs> yeah, we do what we can. All right, Brian, thank you so much. And everybody else, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. All right, thank you, Evan.